Good afternoon, evening, everyone. It's going to be in English. You know? Cool. Um, hello, my name is Jakub Wolf. I'm a side lead of this office, and I would like to welcome you here in Kibikom premises. Uh, we are um, tonight. I'll, my role over here is to be an MC uh, for the evening. I really like that thing. It's <laughs> on the slides, it is really cool. Um, and this is the second session that we have about the management and leadership in the engineering organization. The last one was one year ago. Um, meantime, COVID came and we are so brave that we just did it again during COVID. We started another meetup. Um, but we are back. Uh, and you can also watch the recording of the previous uh, meetup uh, on our YouTube channel with other with this meetup, which will be recorded as well, and other our um, public speaking uh, or conferences that we were up to. The YouTube channel is called codekid.com, so you can find that. Uh, and now what we are looking forward to this evening. Um, so we are going to hear three stories from three different companies. Uh, the presentation is gonna take about 15 minutes each uh, after a short break. Uh, after 45 minutes, we're going to continue with a short panel discussion. Um, our guest is going to answer questions uh, from you guys as well. We have a Slido. Um, it's going to appear later. Um, we got, I'm going to tell you hashtag later. So uh, no worries. It's going to be up there. You can scan the QR code. You know it already probably because you've been doing so many um, meetups. So that's the, that's the beginning, that's the, the boring part, now the interesting part. Um, so the goal of the evening is uh, with the three speakers dive into the topic of change management and how you make changes successful in the engineering organization. Um, each of the company is different and uh, yet they have something in common. They were challenging, uh, they were faced with the challenge status quo and make sure that nobody quits uh, from that change. <laughs> uh, the, the topic is pretty broad and uh, it doesn't take very long when, uh, until the discussion gets very muddy and it gets full of uh, uh, like a buzzwords and a bit of a, like let's say vague terms and you get pretty uh, vague and not very straightforward. So me and the panelists, We'll try to keep it uh, a bit more concrete, a bit full of tips, uh, tricks, and examples how you can do change management uh, in your organization or somewhere else. Uh, the selection of the company is really interesting. Uh, they have different sizes, <laughs> and uh, therefore, the different number of people who don't want to change. It's going to be fun. Um, but let's first, so let me introduce them. First, we have Kebola. It's a, I have to read this because it's kind of hard to <laughs> remember this. It's a cloud based data platform that helps clients combine, enhance, and publish crucial information. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Second company over here is a Muse, uh, an innovative hospitality management cloud. That empowers the modern hotelier uh, to improve performance, maximize revenue, and provide a remarkable guest experience. Mm -hmm. The third one we have Kibicom that enables everyone to travel from any point on the globe to any other point on the globe with a great customer service. Mm -hmm. so, um, I think we can look forward to the amusing and attractive stories uh, and enlightening follow-up discussion afterwards. And now it's time to introduce my three guests tonight. So first one, we have Vojta Tuma, the head of development at Kevola. <laughs> there is the god, there is the god. Hi. <laughs> Before he started working as a developer in Kevola, uh, he spent four months on a bicycle trip, motor bicycle trip going from left to right on Europe, Europe, Euro Asia continent. Very, very, very cool. We have uh, the second. Very cold. Very cold? Very cold, not cold. Cool. Cold, cold. Uh, 
the second guest tonight is uh, Maya Kavinska, VP of VP of Engineering at Muse. Uh, he's a leading product engineering division at Muse, uh, where he creates synergy between product and engineering. He is a leader mentor uh, who makes software delivery progress uh, process work. Uh, he visited several startups in uh, Silicon Valley before he joined over here to the public use. Uh, yes. yes, nice. And the third guest over here is Stano. Uh, I just know him from Stanley, so it's very hard to never remember his real name. But uh, it's uh, Stanislav Stefanic, aka Stanley, uh, VP of Engineering over here in Kiwi. Uh, he, before he actually got to this position, he was a data analyst and software engineer as well. And uh, over the time, he, he grew throughout the team lead and tech lead to this position of VP of engineering over here. He's my boss, so I have to be very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so as I said in the beginning, we're gonna start with a free presentation. They're gonna set up the topic about the change management, and then we're gonna have a panel discussion. The first one, by size, uh, it's always starts, is uh, Boita, who's going to show us more about uh, how they implemented the tracking, uh, issue tracking system in Kabbalah and what it actually requires to do such a change in the, in the organization uh, of around 30 engineers. About four years. Just a second. I need to share the presentation for our online delegates as well. Are we going to be share the Slido or also or? Yes, this, the Slido has been shared so far for the delegate, and mm -hmm. we're gonna show it on screen as well towards the end, so all of you can join. Okay, you can use this. Thank you. So this big button is for the next slide probably. So if you want to do change, it's uh, also change, it's also chance to make something good, I would say. That's, that's what this picture is trying to say. So who well, I am, I'm Wojta, I'm head of development at Kabua. Uh, I'm also CTO of engineering, whatever. We are a company of 70 people, so we are not too big to have a CTO and so on. Uh, you can um, join me on the LinkedIn. My name is Wojta Tupan here, or if you have any question, you can write to me for that. Kevlar is coming. Uh, when I learned about the changes, people don't like the current status uh, or the status quo, what they, what they uh, have at the moment, and they also don't like the changes. What is which can be quite challenging if you want to do something. So uh, I want to talk about my problem, what, what I had and why I need to implement the issue tracking system. Uh, uh, at the beginning, there was a problem. And it was that you promised us to deliver X, whatever it is, some kind of feature, but it's already two months late. That's something what you already heard if you are working in a development that something is late and you probably don't know why. So uh, before I will start showing you uh, how we made it, if we succeed, I will make a shortcut and I will tell you that we succeed. And I want to show you the result what we had. And after that, I will show you the steps how we get it up. So on the beginning, we don't know what we are working on, what is the capacity of our team, what is the estimated price of the feature? Uh, we were not able to estimate a larger feature. By a larger feature, I mean something what can take us more than two weeks. Uh, also, there were some changes uh, of priority during, uh, during time, and we were not able to tell anybody what this change will affect in, uh, in, the, path, uh, in the future. So what do we have now after our implementation? We had uh, initiative, like, let's call the feature. We know uh, how the feature is divided into the epics, which means uh, functionalities, like uh, that we want to do uh, 
uh, step one, step two, step four, every epic has its uh, own output. We know the size of it, so we can estimate how, uh, what will be the cost and how much time does it take. We also know what is the velocity of the team. So we know how many epics, uh, which size we can deliver. Uh, we, are, we also can change uh, how much capacity we want to invest into the, each feature. Uh, so for, for example, we know that if feature X is consists of uh, uh, five XS, which for us XS means some kind of uh, some size of T-shirt, which is which can be translated to some unit of effort. And we can say, okay, we will put here four people, we can deliver, deliver this feature in two sprints. And also here on the right side, that's, that's the first version what we have that we want to deliver Spark workspaces. We need to do two epics uh, of size success and one S. Uh, it will uh, cost us the three thousand dollars, and in the end, we calculated some sum of effort. So that's how. Or what is the output or what is the outcome uh, of our change? And now I will make a step by step tutorial how we met there, uh, how we uh, how we went there. Not exactly how we implement things in the Jira, but if you are on the beginning and you have a problem facing you, and what I got is that everything was tracked only inside the GitHub issues. Uh, it has some pluses, like people were already used to write descriptions uh, in the issues, which is really good because there is no only the massive information on the slide. Uh, we were also used to write the descriptions of the tasks, so we have some definitions of what we have to accomplish, which was really great. But thanks only to having the issues inside the GitHub, we it was very hard to coordinate the whole team because we had around uh, six at, at this moment. It's uh, status of today. Uh, today we have six uh, hundred six hundred and forty three repositories. And average count of the issue in each repository is around 100. Uh, this one is the biggest one, but you can imagine that we have a thousand of issues uh, divided into the several repositories. Uh, we also don't know what is the team capacity, so we cannot promise anything at all. And if we want to do some change in the priority, like let's skip this feature for this feature, it was really hard to know what will happen. What the propagation of the change looks like. Uh, so that was the at the beginning how we target the issues only inside the GitHub. The second problem what we had and we have been facing is that we don't have any working framework. By working framework, I mean Scrum at the moment. Uh, what we have. What does it mean if you don't have uh, any working framework? It also has some advantages. It's it was really stress free environment. Like I had three months to implement a really small feature, which was quite good. And uh, I remember that when I came to Kabula, uh, I had to make one new component and it took me one month and everybody said, it's okay. After that, it took me two months and everybody said, it's okay. And then it took three months and I, I wasn't able to track any progress on it. Like I don't see the finish at all, but everybody said, it's okay. Uh, which was not okay. Uh, maybe it was only my problem. Uh, also, what was the advantage, uh, which was a little bit weird, that the priorities did not switch very often. What does it mean? Uh, if you have some priorities for, for the quarter and you see some, uh, some something what you can do, you can switch the priority, but did in our non-working framework, it did not happen because people were all the time waiting until the previous feature will be delivered. So we didn't switch the priorities very often, which was quite good. But we were impossible to estimate a larger feature. Uh, we were really working in a waterfall environment. Uh, so we can't see any small increments, only the completed features. And we had a very long commit time. So if you want to, uh, you want some new feature, it will take us really months to develop it. So I decided myself that I want to implement Jira along with the Scrum because I have experience with both of them. 
So before you are start doing anything, you should always, that's my advice, do put a fine wise, why are you going to do anything? So uh, I told myself, uh, I want to implement issue tracking system. And I asked myself, why are you going to implement issue tracking system? And my answer was, uh, because I want to see everything in one place. Okay, with that, that that's, that's probably good. That's probably a good idea, but why do you need to see everything in one place? Because I need to know who is working on what. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so let's move forward for another why. Uh, why do you need? Why do you need to know who is working on what? Because I need to estimate the capacity of my team. Uh, if I don't know what is who is working on what, I cannot estimate the capacity. Okay, that's probably a good idea. So you can move forward. Uh, so the next why, uh, the next answer for why was, I need this because I need to fulfill our promises to the rest of the company because we promised that we will deliver something and we didn't do that. So I asked myself why? And if you remember what was my problem, it was that we promised something and we didn't deliver it. So I just proved myself that it should be a good way uh, how to get there. So I know that I want to implement Jira along with this crowd. So I came to the team and I said, okay, I will implement Jira along with the Scrum uh, to utilize you more and we will be more effective and so on. Yes, it was totally success. And this is the end of my presentation. <laughs> uh, honestly, it was not success. Uh, I received another answer. It was like, hey, you want to implement Jira? You don't trust us. You want to trick us? Uh, just a small advice, don't use word tracking. Uh, it's not so friendly and developers don't like it. Uh, I also got one uh, answer of was you want to implement Jira, I will run with the company uh, instead of using the Jira. Uh, next one, it was, it's, it's really slow. Uh, it was true. This only one was true. So uh, now I want to give you a step-by-step -step example of how to implement any change inside the company. Uh, the first thing you need to know or you need to do uh, is to gather the ideas from another companies. By this, uh, I mean, you should not start everything doing by your own, but you should start asking around you. Uh, for example, uh, if, you, uh, if you listen to some podcast and uh, the guy who has been speaking there was really good guy and you think you can ask him a few more questions as I thought it with Marianne and I wrote him afterwards, uh, let's do this. Uh, those pe uh, that people will be really glad to answer your questions. Not, not every month, not every week, but if you write them for one time, they will really answer your question and they will give you like, say, one to, one to two hours like for free to just answer your question and try to help you. Because uh, in the past, probably help, someone helped him uh, the same way. So let's do that. Let's, ask at least three people around you who already has experience with think you want to implement. And my question was, imagine that you are in my situation, what will you do as a first? Okay, you, you get other ideas uh, from other, from, uh, other, uh, other experienced people. And now you need to do something what is called shuffle diplomacy. It's you came to someone in the company and you are, uh, you ask him, hey, we have this problem. Do you also think that we have this problem? And so, yes, I think we have this problem. Okay, I was thinking about it and I tried to fix this problem and I came up with a solution. What do you think about this problem? Uh, about this solution? And most of the time you will get a really valuable answer. So let's do that. You have to talk about 50% uh, of your tech guys. It's really good. That's something what I can do in size of my team. It was talking about the most influencing people in the, uh, in the tech. So I really recommend to ask your team before introducing the change. The next one, you gather the ideas, uh, you know the opinion of the other guys in your team and you should start a demo or trial and you need someone who will help you with the first steps. So for in my position, uh, it was company here uh, in a Prague and I wrote them, hey, I want to start a Jira trial. Can you help me to establish uh, some trial and set up uh, the basic environment? And they said, yes, we can do it. Uh, it wasn't so cheap, but in the end, it 
was uh, it was cheap. <laughs> uh, Why well, it was cheap? Because I will spend a lot much more time when setting up. Uh, okay, so you have trial on Jira. Next thing you want to do is implement a pilot project, but you need to keep this exclusive. Uh, why I think it's need to, uh, to uh, why it's important to keep it exclusive. Just give it to one team, make it a special gift for one team because after that other ones will also want it. So I came to the team. I said, "Hey, I have a new software. You want to try it? I think it will be great." And one team said, "Yes, we want to try it." Then another team came in. "Yes, we want to try it." I said, "You are the second one. Only one team will be the pilot." Uh, so they tried. Okay, if you succeed, sometimes you will just simply not succeed and you should quit it because I think it will be a very hard way to achieve some uh, to achieve some good way. So if those people who try that thinks that the product is really good, you should make them influencers for the other ones because every time it's hard to push something from up, but if the Another team of, let's imagine you have 20 people in a deck and five of them start telling, hey, we have Jira and it's really great and help us. It's much more better than if you will be telling the other teams as a boss, uh, or as a leader, sorry about it, as a leader that I have a really good software. So let's make influencers. Uh, okay, you run the pilot, you have one team. Uh, this team have been using the, the tracking system uh, issue tracking system for one month, you know how it works, you should write the documentation because without the documentation, it will be a real mess. Okay, you have documentation, you have influencers. Now it's time for the big boom. Don't waste your time. Uh, there is a lot of enthusiasm uh, between the people. They want it. Uh, don't, uh, don't waste any time with uh, answering the questions. And so why just make a big boom? Okay, you make a big boom. Uh, everybody is using the Jira at the moment. Uh, they slightly know how to use it because they have documentation. The documentation, is, the documentation is totally not perfect, but they have the documentation. So they don't say they don't complain that they don't have documentation. Uh, and your and first question will again. Hey, we want to change something. Okay, uh, let's establish a Slack channel or Teams or whatever you are using for tweaking and answering the question. Uh, it's because everyone needs to have a voice during the change. Uh, if you will only do the change and don't listen to the people, it will probably fail. And the last step I would recommend you is uh, acquiring an expert if it's necessary, because it's not about only using the tool, but it's about the proper using of the tool. And a lot of people, uh, as the first step, gather ideas from uh, other companies. Uh, it's the same as, uh, as this one, uh, it, because it's endless loop. Uh, you should ask someone, because you will not have, uh, you will not have answers for all, for all their questions. Uh, you should acquire some experts, by, like a consultant, which will give you around two to three hours per month or something like that, but you need someone who is experienced uh, about using the tool properly. Uh, I think this is the last step I would recommend you. So it's about the gathering the ideas, uh, shuffle the diplomacy, starting the demo, implementing to one team, uh, make it exclusive because then uh, other ones it, uh, then big boom, Slack channels, and expert. So that was everything for my short presentation. And I have a, a quiz question here uh, for SOX. Uh, if someone will uh, guess the right answer, he will receive our data socks. It's not data sucks. Uh, at the moment, we have 55 users in Jira, uh, actively using Jira. And how many tickets do you think that we have created in Jira in the last six months? It's probably only for the locals. I'm not sure if anyone can answer on this on the chat. If there is no chat, they are going to answer it. Then you can have to send them the socks. <laughs> <laughs> I can send them the socks. 
500. 1,000, 2,000, 1,500. 1,500. 1,500. You saw the presentation over there. So, who was the closest? 1,500. Oh, you saw. 1,400. So, six for you. For you. That was, that was for you. Yeah. So, so sucks for you guys. Okay, congratulations. Um, what I want to say by this number, uh, you have giraffe for two years, I think, at the moment. And I will not say everybody fall in love with giraffe, but, and, but we are using it as it is really good to work with. Another question. How confident in percentage you think that we are uh, with uh, our delivery at the moment? It means we promise that we will deliver, uh, in next sprint we will deliver X features or X, uh, I would say X uh, stories or issues. And how confident in percentage you think that we are at the moment? Just for, just for the next sprint? Just for, just for the next sprint. 89. 89 is very high. Uh, so, so your, your answer is one more, please. 85. 85? 65. 80. It is quite high. I'll say 50. 50. It's always 50. So, <laughs> it's not, it's not so good. Huh? But uh, at the moment, the best team has uh, its six percent, which is quite high, which means they are too confident and they should put more inside uh, the sprint. The worst team has fifty percent, which is uh, probably because but they are too confident. Uh, but they should not be too confident. But in average, in the last two months, we are hitting sixty-seven percent. So who was? It was you. <laughs> I'm not sure it was the closest. <laughs> I'm not good at Somebody said he was here. But uh, you are excluded because, <laughs> <laughs> because you can take ourselves in the office. <laughs> so who was who was this? I was sixty. You were sixty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bad. You are also bad because you're from the world. 200%. Okay, okay we'll let you over this uh, next time. Uh, okay, uh, that is everything from my side. If you want to try uh, Kebula, let's do it at uh, www.kebula.com and try it for free. It's a really good tool for managing data. Thanks. Thank you. The next one in the row is uh, Maria. Come here. Uh, stage is yours. Thank you, guys. Okay, so let me take over the control. Um, so, uh, you know, without further ado, and thanks uh, to my tech, he made a very good introduction about like what's about. Uh, uh, having the feeling of you know leading people of you know 50 people of size roughly uh and uh, how to make things uh, work in terms of the changes uh at news we have currently uh you know uh, uh something about 100 people 100, 120 and we want to make it to 200 people to end of the year what we do basically is that we provide uh some sort of a solution for for hospitality business in like you know you might be imagine you own uh, your own hotel and uh, you want to uh, have a solution end to end that provides you, you know, and covers all, all different cases, right? For the way how your property management basically works. It's not a rocket science, but in the sciences in making things work uh, sort of seamlessly and work well because those plenty of uh, use cases and tools uh, that you need to cover. Um, you know, currently, like, what, uh, what's our status that we are in uh, 22K, well, 2200 different hotels. So uh, you can imagine the size across the globe. It's not a small thing anymore, in other words, right? And 
the 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 one point why uh, one million per, per use that that's our right now basically yeah right so uh, moving on starting with uh, with uh, with the changes so once again me being Mariana I was leading a you know a couple of uh, teams before leading like I would say a dozen of teams uh, at this point of time and um, I'm going to talk about uh, the basic seven killer tips for making changes happen. Uh, these are the tips that are not part of any, I would say, uh, books or tutorials or whatever. Uh, I live in this field for more than 20 years, so I think like uh, I know what, my, what I might be speaking about. So moving on to a specific example, uh, I actually joined news uh, at the very COVID start period of time, so it was really hard because, uh, you know, no surprise, no public secret, because uh, of the COVID, we had to be careful in uh, at news and uh, there were some layoffs happening, so we had to basically let a certain amount of people go, and it was really unpleasant for me starting at that point of time, because people were saying, okay, so uh, uh, there, there's a bunch of people leaving, nevertheless, Marianne will come. <laughs> so uh, and I was really worried about it, because to, to get trust of people, etc., I, I knew that that's, gonna, that's not going to be easy, right? Um, because of COVID, of course, so like, uh, you know, that we, we faced a lot of things, for example, uh, coming back to, uh, you know, what, what, what I was saying previously is that, you know, the, the morale and the efficiency of the teams were, was not very high, I have to say, so it was the, not the right time to, to fix some of the things, yeah. Uh, if I may turn it from the other side, uh, the outcome which we achieved is that currently, uh, we have something about uh, uh, 19 teams currently, uh, and all the teams are trusted. What I mean by the trust itself is that, you know, being an engineer in our organization, it means something. You are not part of the wheel. You are uh, somebody worth following, somebody like to work to, 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 to get trust. And uh, the way how we made it is by the execution, of course, meaning like, you know, we deliver uh, all constantly like 80% plus of, of our goals. Usually, and before it was something about, I would say 50%. Exactly. Once again, thanks to Weta for covering that because, uh, for example, you know, we had a nice example of uh, the sprint completion. Um, I remember it used to be something about 50%, but now we are constantly at 80% at, at mark, right? So that's that's one of the improvements. And of course, like, uh, that comes down to scaling and, uh, you know, having more time, et cetera. So uh, it's not about the, the change itself, by the way, how we how we made these things work, uh, and that's that's the core thing which we which we want to talk about and uh, discuss here. And we basically made these changes happen in uh, in one single year. Um, so uh, imagine yourself being in my shoes, uh, starting in, in the uh, in the in a single company of a similar size. Uh, so the first thing which I was going for is I was saying like, hey, let's do some sort of a Internal audit, give me some time. So uh, so I'm getting better the, the, the knowledge of the environment, of people, of who are the team makers, so who are the right people to talk to, etc. Right. So basically it was about forming a strategy, communicating big things transparently, and making sure that you know I raise my hand and I'll, you know, after discussing with people, I say, This is my vision, this is my mission, this is how I want to make things work. And uh, please please trust me, give me some time to, to make that work, basically. That's about it, right? So uh, having the vision and communicating more transparently, that's, that's the number one thing. And uh, the, top, the top most one is once again, uh, the shuffle diplomacy here. What I mean to say, imagine once again, you have your plan. The plan is great, you trust it, right? You, you trust your plan. So uh, you invite the guys for, for the very first formal, formal meeting where you wanna basically demonstrate your plan. But uh, there are people coming back to you and saying, okay, this might not be working, this is shit, this is uh, not the best for fall through. So instead of uh, making that presentation before, what, you should, what we should be doing basically is to basically identify the decision makers and uh, having the private vision calls with them, um, present them, uh, let's say, you know, the vision, the idea. So basically you get the buy-in. Before, before you do that, uh, there is no way you, you can, you know, succeed very much because uh, it's only this way that, that works the most. And if you don't designate another time on this one, the shuttle diplomacy, then uh, rest assured that whatever great plan you might have, it will delay you quite a lot because there will be too many people asking too many questions. So that's the first one. The second one, uh, you know, no surprise, there are people coming back to you and saying, uh, you know, your plan, your plan won't 
might not be working. You have haven't uh, you know thought through some of the things. Uh, I don't trust you. Uh, you have uh, bad data or bad inputs, whatever that is, right? And actually, what I'm trying to say, normal people, what they do is that they go they go back and they they try to improve their plan. It might make sense, but uh, let's be honest. Instead of doing that, what we should be rather doing is to take that risk to say, okay. Uh, this is what I have. This is this is the thing I trust the most because I spoke with most of the people. So uh, let's let's go ahead and let's make it work. So what I need to say is that minor resistance actually is a good sign. So don't don't look for perfection. Uh, instead, just make make things work in the iterative way. Let's let's start somehow. That's what I mean to say. Because if you end up implementing some sort of RFC process for half a year, then uh, you get you lose the momentum and nobody is going to trust you anymore. So that's that's uh, that's the second one. You know, after uh, of course uh, I came with my mission. Uh, imagine once again uh, in my situation, there's a there's a dozen of different teams, and uh, it's not about like you know talking to three teams about how they should be working and what's what's expected from their side. So instead, uh, the decision was like to create some sort of transparent uh, let's say, let's say visualization throughout which uh, we will be uh, sort of predictably measuring uh, how we work, what's the, I wouldn't call it efficiency, but what are the factors that might be saying us that something is going off track, right? So uh, basically what, we, what we've done is that we implemented a couple of different measures. Of course, after talking with people, I was, I was uh, uh, fully informed that what might be the, the top things to go, go, go through, meaning like, for example, once again, uh, sprint completion, that, that's some, some, some things, so, but we talked about it, you know, usually the, the other issue that people are working like hell, but they are not just working on the right things. So we are measuring the role of contribution, meaning like, you know, what are the things that really contributes to, to, to the main, uh, let's say, goals, you know. And of course, it might be the cycle time, it might be the number of uh, unplanned or ad hoc uh, things that are entering the, the plans of the teams, because if the ratio is too high, they're no surprise you, you can't deliver what you promised, right? So the very simple thing, and to uh, measure measure that and trans transparently, uh, that's that's the basically the killer feature here. So the way how I do that, uh, it, it's just about like to sell it, these data some sort of gamification, meaning like uh, you know on constant basis I was massaging the guys on my weekly basis after we finished uh, our our sprint cycles about you know comparing what's the status of the teams, you know, what's their completions, meaning sprint completion and how successful they are basically, right? So, and I was really looking forward for, these are the teams who made it on the top. These are the reasons why certain teams that are at the bottom haven't achieved the things because of whatever, but uh, uh, it uh, wasn't about being being sort of negative about the, the bottom teams. It was about saying transparently what are the issues that came up into the game and uh, into, you know, into their role basically, right? So once again, these pictures are just for all, and I, I know that people love, love cats, so uh, that's the reason why I know that my presentation is going to be the best. <laughs> and uh, here, what I mean to say, the constant massaging, once again, is, is, the, is the top thing here. So you can't over-communicate. That's, that's the thing. If you, if you have the plan, but you get silent, then, uh, then your mission will be forgotten. The other thing, of course, there are plenty of things which we've done, uh, but uh, I don't go into to what we accomplished, but the way how we accomplished that. One of the other examples is that, you know, in small interactive way, we, for example, improve the, our structure of the JIRA or user issues or whatever we use. Uh, but, uh, you know, as I was saying, we might uh, uh, have an attention to uh, be looking for perfection. But once again, instead of doing that, let's do things iteratively in a, in a small iterative steps, so you can have your your best feedback to to make sure that you know you see what's what's happening after you improve uh, uh, you know whatever aspect of of, of your plan. Uh, imagine, for example, once again uh, a scenario that you know you want to implement something like which is valid proof, but usually it doesn't work because you, we end up having a I would say 200 uh, knowledge-based book, nobody's going to read in the end, right? So it's much better. What I'm trying to say is that it's not about covering all the edge cases, but if you end up having 80% of things covered, that's, that's a whole good ratio. 
the, the rest of the 20 percent you can you can take, take that uh, dynamically offline whatever but that's already a very good ratio yeah. the additive of course coming back to the gamification and the game uh uh you know my experience tells me that most most of the company the way how they work is that they say this is the process this is crowd this is compound this is this is the way how we work but uh the, the way how I communicate that, that to, to my team is that these are just the guidelines, meaning the difference is that I'm not looking for making sure that you follow them. What I'm about to, to be keen to see from your side is actually you break the guidelines in like, of course, we have certain KPIs and metrics to say that, you know, whether the things are going right or not. But actually, the best thing to make uh, is that, you know, you allow basically the team to override these guidelines so they can fine tune it for their own uh, purpose. And, uh, you know, basically this way you allow them to experiment with things. So uh, the, the final thing, what I'm trying to say here is that, uh, you know, we should avoid basically using the word, uh, these are the rules, this, this is the process. This is just the guideline and, uh, uh, you know, Find, find yourself the best way to approach the situation just to, to deliver the stuff. Meaning like, you know, for example, how it works in, in practice is that if in case we spin up a new team, we are saying, okay, let's let's follow the guideline. But as soon as you you reach the, the standards, then uh, that there is uh, there, that's uh, not just, that's not a status quo. Uh, instead, you should be improving that moving forward. And that's what I want to see. The tip number six, uh, and once again, I know that, you know, some of the people can, will tell us that, you know, that that's, that's sort of obvious here, yeah? but, uh, you know, when you are a change agent, meaning like you want to uh, make your change should be implemented and successful, you will have to dedicate some of your time in your calendar for uh, having an extra time for, for improvements. So, for example, my uh, recommendation, and not only to me, but to, for example, my teammates and my directors, is to make sure that you know I want to see that at least you have you have different focus blocks, and that that's the black ones in your calendar uh, that you can't break. Of course, there are there are certain exceptions, <laughs> but uh, if you don't do that, uh, people will fill it uh, your own calendar with other stuff, with other operational uh, whatever talks, and uh, in the end of the day. You might be helping people, but uh, you don't do you, you don't work on your big rocks. You you work in only on, on your small tiny initiatives, which nobody's gonna care, take care of in the end because people they want to see, they, they they want to see outcomes, not the small tiny things, and they are not looking for excuses about you know. But I was helping to somebody else. That's a no go. That's your fault. Number seven. That and I would say that this one is a very tricky one. And that's my last one because I was talking about seven tips here. Number seven is about you know uh, once again you had your plan, which is great, but uh, there are people coming back and uh, challenge you, and maybe there, there's a lack of trust or for whatever reason they are coming back to you and telling you like you know let's do the slot analysis, let's do some pros cons analysis about like whether that pays off or not. But uh, if you are senior enough, you can you can prove yourself on the board of saying like you know, man, just trust me, uh, and things maybe will end up well. Uh, just give me the challenge, give me the space, and I will make that work for you. Uh, so uh, here in that sort of a bigger company, so what happens usually is that you know we do some sort of a rough three to six months analysis of something, and then only then you're allowed to implement your change, which might be already too late because you are already tired from the various thoughts, speaking with various people. Instead, you should be there just taking the challenge, looking in the eyes of that person and saying like, come on, trust me, uh, I want to start executing on this, and that's a no-go. Otherwise, uh, we are not like the, the right partners here. So uh, these are the real lessons learned, which I dare to say you can't find in the books. <laughs> so hopefully you will remember, you know, the, the sort of set, and uh, that's about it. So with that in mind, uh, moving back to Stanley. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for this event. Uh, thanks for those who are watching. Let me try to fix here so I can see you. 
Okay. Let's start. Okay, so hello, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Stanley. Hello. hello. Okay. That's better. My name is Stanley. I'm a VP of Engineering in Kiwi. People already introduced us, so uh, I will not spend much more time here. And uh, I'm uh, the last speaker today about our topic, which is change management. And uh, I will show you, give you my uh, ten, uh, my, my ten tips uh, this time. Uh, we were working independently, and it will be very interesting that you will see uh, where we are. Uh, uh, aligned and basically where we are uh, sharing the same tips and then maybe where we are uh, different uh, and I think uh, we will have something to do with maybe the size and the culture we will see. Uh, what's uh, just for the context what different uh, guys were uh, talking a little bit more about trust and about the uh, visualization of the data uh, in engineering uh, my use case where I will be demonstrating uh, change management will be how we are uh, Rolling out CARA framework for 40, uh, sorry, 400 engineers in, in Kiwi.com. So basically, difference is scale and different use case. Uh, but uh, I will not uh, go deeper uh, on into what is uh, CARA framework. I won't be talking too much about this. I will be more focusing in the process, how we roll it out. Uh, I will also start with the outcomes where we are today. Uh, so today, we have uh, in our CARA framework, we have uh, job families for uh, everybody in our R&D organization and levels. We have clear path uh, with uh, uh, basically clear path per every single job family with concrete, explicit, and unified work expectations. What is described in skills matrix? Uh, basically, uh, we, we have a system which is saying that okay, uh, from seniors, very engineers, we are expecting this and that. From junior data analysts, we are expecting this and that. So basically, this is giving people very nice. Uh, Growth plan or basically grow expectations, uh, uh, and they can focus on it when they are uh, trying to grow. Uh, then uh, we have a fair uh, mechanism how to evaluate and compensate for this performance and growth. Uh, the process is predictable, it's fair, it's happening based on timelines that two times per year, and uh, currently we are just started our four iteration. But of course, this is uh, not what happened like uh, overnight, and uh, when I went back. Well, for years, two or three, uh, and I was thinking about how we how we get there. I formed my ten uh, tips. So let's start with the first one. Uh, when you are going to do any uh, any change, make sure that you really understand what is the problem. What is the problem statement? Start with why. Uh, Sinek has a very good book about it. But really, uh, this is. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, this is pretty straightforward and everybody will start with this, but many times I see that uh, people start solving something what they think is the problem, they are solving a couple of months, and after a couple of months of work or weeks or whatever, they start challenging themselves or somebody starts to challenge themselves and start asking, okay, so why exactly we are solving this? What is the actual problem? So make really sure that you know that what is the problem, uh, what is the problem definition and make sure that you are solving the root cause not just some symptom or consequence of some other problem uh, in our case uh, just to give you an example the problem really wasn't that we don't have a uh, current friend the problem was somewhere else uh, and usually you, need, you can get uh, the sense of what is the problem from in the feedbacks and data ideally combine these two uh, so basically what was our problem is for example that uh, different managers saw uh, senior engineer as, uh, as somebody else. Like basically, uh, people who are working on the same level and doing same jobs uh, usually was uh, categorized in the, on, on different scale based on who was their managers. Uh, or uh, simply uh, very typical mistakes of very, very many uh, companies uh, which are scale ups or, or startups. Uh, we had just one uh, career pass for growth. Basically, senior technical, very good senior technical people becoming managers. And as you know, uh, this is not always the good thing, um, and some some other problems which are listed here, but it doesn't really matter. What I'm trying to say is that you really need to uh, make sure that you know what is the problem, what you are going to fix, and then focus on this. The second tip is uh, you, you you need to form your vision, like where you want to get. When you are rolling out uh, changes in such a big company and such complex and this, uh, then. Uh, you will not know what exactly is the solution 
from the spot. You, would, you, don't, you will not know like how exactly social will look like. So you need to have a vision to know like once I'm there and what I'm there, uh, but you don't know particular steps how it will look like. Uh, you can be just sure with two things and you need to be realistic here and manage your expectations. You will definitely not solve it uh, like with one shot uh, and it will be ideal for everybody when you are talking about hundreds of people and uh, you will not uh, solve, solve, solve it overnight. The third tip, uh, you need to, to start getting buy-in uh, and uh, bigger the company is, uh, more buy-in you need, probably. Uh, and I would say like uh, you need to buy-in from three groups of, of uh, people. First one is uh, management. Basically, you need uh, their, their mandate. Uh, you need buy-in to basically uh, solve the problem and, uh, and their support, basically. They, they, they stake all the, like they, they, uh, they, they, they sponsorship mainly. Uh, this is usually not that, uh, not that hard. Basically, when you come to your manager and tell them, uh, okay, uh, this is the problem and I will fix it, uh, I can almost certainly guarantee you that they will not uh, tell you, okay, don't, don't do it. Uh, so this is not hard to get. Uh, then you have your peers. Uh, this is maybe even easier. Uh, even they join you or they will thank you that, okay, you will solve, solve most of my problem. Very good. Uh, and uh, then you have team. And uh, this is the tricky one because this is actually people who are most probably most impacted by the change. And uh, at the same time, the, the buying is a little bit different to get. So uh, here's coming in place as guys describe shuffle diplomacy, how they call it. Basically, you need to start putting these seeds of uh, like, uh, okay, do you see this is uh, also the problem? How I can fix it? Uh, validate basically the problem and start asking people the questions or multiple channels. Uh, and really, as, as Marian uh, uh, would have said, uh, don't underestimate it. Uh, when you are getting the buy-in uh, from these two groups, uh, one more thing, uh, you need to use completely different tactics and, uh, uh, and uh, trust me that each of these groups want to hear something different. So one presentation which you will just share you all uh, doesn't work. Uh, then uh, you need to set up a right ownership and team for doing this change. Basically, people who will be forming, uh, uh, who will be solving the problem. Uh, first, uh, make sure that you com combine uh, correctly expertise, domain knowledge, and the passion and traction of people. So the group need to have all, of, all three of them. Then they give, the, give, them, uh, give them mandate so they can actually solve it, uh, support them. And uh, then as Maria Cho, uh, people need uh, to have time for it. So make sure they have allocated time. Uh, these changes are, are, are costly and uh, they will not happen in like uh, as we originally thought when we were doing it first, first try and, and we found that we will do it in our free time. Uh, this is not the case. And then a uh, very good tip here for the focus group. Uh, focus group, once you have a problem statement and a mission, you have a very good, uh, very good chance to form very good focus group. And what is good focus group is that basically you put their people who are, uh, Mar Mar Marianne was also touching this topic that basically they can influence others and also they represent groups of people ideally covering all the people which will be impacted by the change. Uh, this is not a trivial exercise because so sometimes you can favor somebody who is at a local or something, but you really need to think hard who, who to put there and once you have there, you have there all the views, viewpoints, all the opinions, then ask these people to work together on creating this. If you succeed, this is priceless because you have two, you have two important things which will increase the probability of success. Uh, first, you are going to, uh, they are going to come up with a solution which will be made then roll out to the whole audience. And when you have a very diverse group which cooperating, there's a high chance that they will come up with a good solution. And the second, uh, they are your uh, advocates, your, your agents. They are they are doing basically the same shuffle diplomacy as you did because they co-created it. So this is there is very recent tip uh, and don't underestimate it. Uh, at the same time, badly chosen uh, working group can uh, can lead to fail most probably of the whole project. Then uh, get inspired. Uh, I think when that touches the topic. Um, my comment here is uh, exactly uh, don't. Uh, most probably when you are going to do some change, there is very fair chance that somebody already did it. Uh, and uh, therefore don't start from zero, don't, don't reinvent the wheel. But at the same time, don't try to copy paste somebody else one-to-one. Uh, -one. 
uh, with so many components which try to copy paste Spotify with uh, Carver with their uh, tribes and etc. And they fell and later Spotify claimed they, they kind of fail with this. Uh, get this fire, but then take it and adjust it to your use case, to your culture, to, to your modus operandi. Don't copy to it by two, one, one, two, one. Uh, you can get this fire uh, by the uh, many companies, many companies sharing it via such like these meetings, meetups, uh, via blogs. They are, they are having it public. Uh, they take it as inspiration. I recommend Geeky Guys because uh, there is a very good chance that they spend significant resources into doing it uh, perfectly. And one professional tip ideally, I hire, hire somebody from this company <laughs> who actually you in this system and uh, give them ownership uh, to solve it in, uh, for you. So they can bring the expertise, the knowledge from, from, uh, from its practical, very practical expertise. And uh, then uh, get to know your culture, connect with new people who you have in house who had great domain knowledge and cultural knowledge, combine this group, and it's a uh, set for success. Then uh, the problem is, uh, or things like these are usually like kind of big. Uh, I recommend to slide this in this way. Uh, first, uh, don't go to specific discussions and uh, to chit chat think about things which can trigger emotions. Basically, start with uh, some basic frameworks and, and, and just first put together concepts and principles. So be in a WAC level uh, where you are speaking about like, okay, what principles should work like, how we would like to operate. Don't go like uh, into discussion like what this will actually mean for my team or me. Uh, so stay on principles and concept level first. Uh, agree on this. It depends how you how you get there. In our case, as we were really got to for 400 people already, because we started implementing too too late. Uh, it was pretty like RFC formal RFC of 56 pages. Uh, then uh, choose uh, some early adopters. Uh, again, do MVP something similar like what that what that did with uh, with the first team. Uh, ideally, choose some early adopter uh, smartly. Ideally, some smaller group or you can do like we did, most complicated job family as what we had uh, uh, with um, like the biggest job family of 400 people. Uh, there are pros and cons, of course, the smaller one you can most probably get uh, sooner, uh, where you like, like prove it sooner. Uh, on the other hand, with these conceptual things, which cannot, it's not about trying, it somehow needs to be there and it, it works at some scale. Uh, once you accomplish it with such a big and complex family, the others follow very easily. And, and we see it basically others join very quickly because they saw, okay, if it could work for a software engineer, then it could work for everybody. Um, and then in the first uh, first step, uh, once you have your other uh, 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 early adapter and you have basic concepts, then apply these concepts uh, and adjust them to basically what this concept and principles actually mean for my job family or software engineer. Usually then you are forming uh, for our case, for our use case, uh, career paths and levels, then uh, skills matrices, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, one thing well, which uh, can, uh, sometimes is being forgotten, but I would like to mention is here, uh, don't support to ensure uh, all the tooling, all the infrastructure, all the support what you need for change. Uh, usually you are thinking too much about the uh, about okay, okay, how it will work, but then you need to run it. And, okay, so where you will run it? Uh, for tooling, uh, there are many tools for performance management, etc. On the on the like available. Uh, my tip is that don't always go for like expensive tooling. Uh, they are very good uh, that they can collect the data, but sometimes they are not really sharing the data outside the platform. Uh, so so think carefully. Uh, don't underestimate it. Uh, of course, very much depend on the size of the team. In a small team, we can just use something simple. Uh, the bigger the company is, the more more sophisticated tooling probably probably you need. Uh, you need to just map your use cases, what you need with this, and and uh, and then, then then choose the right one. Uh, I can recommend that even for us, uh, simple G Suite can work. Uh, you go to Google for with some AppScript and Google Sheet, and voila, it works. It works for us. It works for Google. It could work for everybody, I guess. Um, and a secure support unit uh, for, for our use case with Azure, etc. So don't forget anybody. Okay, you have basically everything, almost everything in mind in, in hand. Then time to execute it. So do uh, first run, pilot. 
Uh, here I would like to mention two things. Uh, first, uh, ensure uh, psychological safety uh, because you are rolling out change which can uh, impact uh, significantly day to day life of people. Uh, in our case, it was, for example, uh, uh, initial calibration. Basically, we had some work system where people have somehow assigned uh, positions, for example, I don't know, semi or JavaScript engineer, and after calibration, after the system, they uh, should become, uh, for example, media or software engineer. So it was kind of a picture for them, or big, big uh, demotion, or potential demotion. So we need to come with, this, uh, with these things. Uh, in this case, we, we saw it very easily, like people get enough time and people get an uh, option to choose, like even I will accept a new position because it's very good like, based on the first system, or I will I will try harder and I, I have like 12 months to get there. Uh, I, I just want to like stress that like this change could be big enough for people that you need to manage and you need to ensure that, uh, that they, they are safe, they are feeling safe. And also uh, manage expectations also from your, your side when you are rolling out uh, things on that, uh, that big scale, uh, then uh, make pretty clear that uh, it won't be perfect in the first uh, Like uh, I, I would be very surprised if you would uh, run something on hundreds of people and everybody would be happy and, and agree with this. Uh, and then uh, the second important point is uh, communication or over communication. Basically, you cannot over communicate such things. I, I think Maria mentioned. Also, uh, make sure that communication open, transparent, targeted, and uh, bigger you are, the communication is more difficult and more complex, more robust. In our case, it's a combo of many, many things from RFCs, town halls, select, uh, select, select channels where anybody can ask anything, one to ones, cascading, etc., supported with some trainings, uh, workshop demos, etc. Uh, Ninth tip uh, once you roll it out the first iteration, it's just the beginning. So now it's time to learn, iterate, and improve. Uh, and here I would mention just really uh, work very good in, with feedback. Uh, listen, listen, people, and ideally do it in two ways. Do it uh, in a way that you are rolling it uh, out via some forms or, or basically creating spaces where everybody can share feedback, like uh, proactively. Uh, and then uh, every time in every company, you will identify also some vocal individuals who could be maybe negative for, for further ones, but they are very great source of uh, feedback. So approach, don't be afraid to approach and use them, to, to go to them, speak to them, and ideally, what is the best, try to convert them from uh, criticizing to be your agents for, in the working group uh, for the next round. This is uh, the best how you can utilize these people because they, they probably know why they are not, not satisfied, they just, don't know how to say it, how to tell you. Um, and of course, uh, in every iteration, you can scale up even horizontally or with vertically. In our case, we were adding more families, we were adding more, more things to, 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 to the whole system. And uh, the last one is don't let it die. Uh, basically, uh, things like this uh, is not something what you will roll it out and it will work for 20 years uh, or forever. It's a living organism. Uh, career, career framework, especially, is very much a living organism that's growing with the company. Just to give you some taste, when we first uh, when we first uh, roll out the, our first community for software engineer, it was very, very, very explicit with 35, uh, approximately 35 uh, like um, competencies uh, we had defined intentionally because there was many like, was very scattered uh, understanding of what is mid junior, senior, etc. Uh, so it was very explicit. Now after first four iteration of the third one, uh, we have actually uh, just four, four categories, very simple one, uh, and many things in just two iterations became implicit. Uh, let's check. And of course, uh, then uh, try to make uh, the whole system, uh, the whole like iteration and basically agility behind this uh, business as usual. You don't want to do big change after every iteration. So make sure that basically everything is doing automatically. So now we have two times per, per year of performance review. And after every performance, you automatically record feedback, uh, then uh, forming focus group and iterating and improving it. And, uh, and everything is kind of business as usual. So that's it. And here I would like to recap some key takeaways I would like to, you to take uh, from today's session or from this presentation. 
Uh, first, uh, once you need to do some changes, do it rather sooner than later and don't repeat mistake of others. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, in what uh, scale you are right now as your, your company. And now this is basically mostly to, to leadership. Uh, and it also doesn't matter what business you are doing. The growth pains are more or less the same. So try to be open-minded, try to watch and, and getting materials because uh, you would rather you would like rather to identify these problems sooner and roll out fix sooner uh, than later. I, can, I guess you can agree with me that rolling out, uh, for example, performance framework uh, to 50 people is way easier than 500. Uh, the second thing, uh, combine a high level vision or high level approach with bottom up, form the team uh, from all together and let uh, let uh, let it uh, like team to create the solution from both sides uh, and, and leverage basically the direction to vision with, uh, with actually like a, a knowledge of people who are actually working and living with uh, in the environment where you are going to change something. Uh, communication is crucial. Uh, there is no way to under communicate uh, or oh, sorry over communicate almost anything. Uh, BHL, don't go like don't don't think that you will roll it out in one glance and uh, everything will work as a charm. Uh, this is very naive. Try something, iterate, try, uh, try again, and evolve, evolve, evolve. Uh, once you have one that you're going to lead for perfection, you, you will almost certainly fail. Uh, then, very important thing: be sure you actually want it. Uh, I saw some changes fail because. They didn't actually want it. They just wanted it. Uh, so there was no sponsorship from, for example, from the top. So once you don't have really somebody who is actually really wanted, really asking for it every uh, day, week, whatever, and pushing for it, and actually like people feel it. People will just start ignoring it because nobody is checking it. So why why would we do it? So really make sure that you are going to change things only which matters or which you actually want to change. Um, then, uh, repeating Marian said, don't aim for perfection, uh, especially when you are uh, sometimes need to roll out process. This ugly word, word, I agree, but for some things, when it comes to fairness, to safety, etc., process makes sense. Uh, even you might be calling it sometimes differently, but it's at the end of the day, some, some process. Uh, be careful to not over process. Process should work for 80% ideally. Uh, not not uh, try to solve 100% uh, by some process because it became became even uh, never finished or by bureaucracy. Uh, follow the feedback and combine combine with data. Basically, from feedback you are getting getting taste, and with data you are validating. Actually, yes, it's true. And uh, last but not least, don't give up and don't compromise. During the, we were, when we were rolling, uh, for example, this prior framework, there were many moments where people were challenging, people were upset, etc. But it also touches with the trust topic. Uh, once you trust that you are doing the right thing and uh, and, and you did everything correctly, don't do compromises, don't give up, and and and, and uh, finish it. Uh, here, uh, I think it's worth uh, just after two two three iterations. We are having a huge framework in place which uh, makes sense, which people like, and uh, and and it's serving the purpose. The purpose. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, big kudos to Tobias, the guy who uh, should be hired. <laughs> uh, one of our, our engineering managers, who is uh, kind of our father of uh, our framework in Uh He's sitting there. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, I think that's it. And we can move to the Q&A. How do you feel, guys? Great. Great, wait up. I drink one beer, so I'm okay. <laughs> Stanley, good after the presentation. <laughs> Thanks for the great talks. Actually, it was a very well. Uh, when I saw you trying yesterday, you were confused sometimes, but today it was perfect. <laughs> no, we have over here. Um, so I have a few questions, like, um, and you can also ask over here. Um, but the first one was uh, you, you all give a nice like a set of steps that you believe are the things that you need to successfully implement the change. And my question is, which one would do you believe people 
uh, under underestimate or underrate the most, and which one is most overrated sometimes? I would say the underestimated is shuffle diplomacy. Mm -hmm. It's most of the times like you are just go create the document, here is the change, here is the RFC, whatever, you put it into the place and it will simply not work. So the shuffle diplomacy, I would say <laughs> it's most of the time underestimated and it's the most powerful tool you can use in the changes. Mm -hmm. The other thing we got it repeated uh, multiple times, meaning like, you know, uh, not looking for the perfection. So that's, that was, I would say, the greatest thing there. Uh, so uh, and I see that happening to me uh, previously and to other people as well, that, you know, they are going too much for, for some sort of a brilliant and use case, uh, but those all things, yeah. wait, waiting for too much, basically. Yeah, it's like, do it on the first run perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot fail. Uh, you will. Yeah. <laughs> I would still agree with communication in general, with the shuffle diplomacy, but with all the ways of communication and uh, actually making sure that we understand each other together. Uh, because many times, like uh, as Lloyd said, like, okay, you can do some document, but if somebody actually read it and if uh, actually understand it. So, uh, communication topic uh, overall. Communication. Is it even impossible to say like some, something is overrated from the list? I don't I, think, I, so. I think we would. I can think like what is it? To make a nice document. To make a nice document. Good graphics. <laughs> a nice presentation. The presentation doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you, I was interested also, you, you mentioned on one of the, I think it was uh, you, Voito, when you said that don't mention we're tracking. And you, uh, Marianne, you said like, don't mention we process. What other words did you find that can you kick in the ass over the, over the course of the change? What are, what are the, for you, what people are triggered by? I think work performance. <laughs> Measure it. Efficiency. <laughs> because if you are telling something and you have your idea behind it, it doesn't mean necessarily that the other one has the same idea behind this work. Mm -hmm. So for me, tracking is a weapon for a development team or, or like a shield behind the quick changing of priorities and so on. But for the developers, it may sound like, uh, I want to know what you have been doing or what you have been doing during the launch time. Mm -hmm. Or uh, what, what did you do yesterday from 9, uh, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. or something like that. But I really don't care. And that's, that's a thing. Uh, that's a, why I think that can be dangerous to use those words mm -hmm. because you as a manager see something else behind it. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a good topic because uh, the way how I talk about it is that, you know, I want to help you basically, mm -hmm. which is about, you know, I want to have these data available and they serve uh, as, a, as, a, as an act of prevention, if you know what I mean. And you're like, you know, we can, we can spot uh, too early like what's happening and act about, upon it as opposed to just, uh, 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 you know, leaving the situation rotting for uh, several weeks or months until it's going to, it's so much difficult to get out of it that uh, that it might be already, already too late. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, just you know, try to help. That's that's my narrative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So word help is a uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Kind of, and that's how I start the one on ones of mine. For example, you know, the first sentence: How can I help you? Mm -hmm. So that's 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 a principle. Yeah. But overall, all these things are basically to help something, but we are underestimating that communication that actually is helping. Is about what mm -hmm. I said. Like, my problem statement explaining that basically it's not about, I don't know, having tracking or having um, performance management framework, something like this. It's about solving the problems. But basically, at the end of the day, we all have like, uh, we don't want to be in unfair env environment that somebody is compensating better than you because uh, because there is no guidelines, nothing would basically say that, okay, but uh, it doesn't matter that you are louder, mm -hmm. uh, it matters like what you're doing. Uh, and this, the, same, the same is with, with, uh, with tracking, with road mapping, etc. It's all tools to protect the team. Uh, but of course, like uh, usually, like, it has this 
uh, bad taste that uh, with some people it's kind of biographic. Mm -hmm. Uh, they didn't have uh, exactly tracking roadmap. It's basically great to to very nicely say no, and uh, like ping pong mm -hmm. it to another uh, another side. Okay, like we can change our roadmap. Huh? Takes it, it means something. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned, and it's obvious that when you say change, there will be a people who say no. And um, you mentioned that Paul. Uh, and you mentioned that you have some some idea how to. So my question is, how do you work with the detractors of the change? You mentioned you have an open channel. Imagine that there is the there is that person, that one person that bothers you. Uh, what's your strategy to to deal with this kind of uh, approach? Actually, I like what uh, what Stanley was saying is that the the guys who have the you know highest negative voice actually they are they are the biggest uh, asset. Because you can turn them into uh, the the guys who are like you know trying to help you here, because other people might not be so keen to have to provide you the right level of feedback. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing. As I was saying, like to have some sort of a minor resistance is great, but uh, of course, like you know, we might have another case that is like you know, uh, there's a half of people raising their hands that you know that's a complete bullshit of yours. Uh, and in that case, of course, it might be either you don't have it well thought through, that is one case, but usually the most often what ha what's happening is that the timing is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. like we should move it to, let's say, another, uh, by, by another couple of years or, mm -hmm. you know, put it back, put it back in our backlog or whatever. Uh, it is always about, most of all, always about the timing. Mm -hmm. So it's not about one detractor, as you mentioned, if there are more, then it's a sign of yeah, problem. Yeah. We, we, we talk about the problems, but the fourth dimension is the timing, whether that's the right time to tackle mm -hmm. that, that thing at this point in time. And sometimes the problem is that not everybody understands that it's actually sometimes the timing. And this many times like why these detractors are like raising their voices because they maybe just don't yet understand that it is a time and there is no proceed yet. But it could be just on just the thing, but otherwise I agree with what I said to the talk and uh, Marianne said. Uh, ideally, these people are, uh, even when they are the, the tractor and sharing some negative comments, they are many times right, in, at least mm -hmm. from some point of view. Uh, and of course, there is some level, like uh, some people are sharing negativity just because they do. Uh, then you need to identify it. The layer is very thin. Uh, but usually, like, it's good to approach them, really listen to them. Uh, and, and after a couple of questions, you are getting to the point and they actually reveal something that will maybe overlook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything was talked. All right. Uh, you touched the uh, one thing is the four dimension, the time. None of you necessarily mentioned how long that a change actually take or took uh, or is take. I don't know if it's still in progress, <laughs> depends. Uh, can you a little bit elaborate how long did it take? Or let's say each of you, what's the time frame that we are, we were talking about in the presentation? So I will probably start because my team is the smallest one. Uh, I think we can say it all happened in one month or something like that. But one month means that everybody started using issue tracking system, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean they started using it properly. So. Uh, we have been discussing this yesterday, and someone was you know, probably you asked me uh, how how many weeks does it took to, and I said it was something from quarter one to quarter one or something like that. And, <clears throat> and I think one year was the time when we started using the Jira properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, in my case, it was uh, it was even even simpler that, than that because I had to prove that you know I'm I'm worth the position I am. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I needed to make sure that you know I demonstrate my skills and the outcomes in healthy air. Okay. So basically, the most other things have been happening like physically. Like uh, I was uh, I was doing the internal audit for the first two to three months, and then the other three months were, were about the execution. Mm -hmm. So that was and that was really fast. Mm -hmm. So you are not improving it? Uh, I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be on the same level. Thank you. Don't make him feel bad. But I, I would say, yeah, I, I would say like most of the things, like the core uh, of the first, uh, I would say, set of improvements, they had, it, it had to be available 
in a in a given amount of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You had somebody there who really actually wanted. To <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, true. Yeah, that is true. Uh, in our case, that we were doing it in two like two times. Uh, first, first one was. Uh, I think there was like actually missing when I was mentioning. Like there was actually like we wanted it, but it was not good timing. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really want it, uh, and uh, we didn't really like uh, think about all the all the things. What what does it actually mean? So first was like idea was like about three years three years ago. Then it was like one year when we passed, and then the uh, the next iteration, and maybe half a year of uh, like uh, putting it in place. Uh, and it's still happening. Like uh, it depends. Like what do you mean? Like itself. It, it's yeah. not solved. Like my my when we're discussing with Tobia, like uh, when we think our world of was the plan or vision, like where it was actually be working as we'd like to, we know that it will take two to three years. Like it needs approximately four iteration to get uh, to get to business mm -hmm. as usual. So people will get too used to it and it'll be like automatic process. Mm -hmm. But actually, like uh, rolling out the first. Calibration uh, was, I think, a good, a good signal. Mm -hmm. I will add one thing uh, to time it. As, um, as Marianne said, there was uh, one thing, trust me. And trust me is very well connected with the timing. Because if you are going to do some change and you said, OK, trust me, uh, I know what I'm doing and uh, it will take you one year, uh, you will be probably get fired. Uh, <laughs> Because that's the good thing when you enter the company and nobody knows you. Because the expert is someone from another city. It's it's nothing else. It's just someone uh, who you don't know his, uh, his expectation, his knowledge, whatever. Uh, it's just expert for you. And if you enter the company, you will start changes. And these changes are happening in the time. You will probably succeed because you can use the word trust me. But if you are in the company for one year and you didn't do anything as a manager, this trick will probably not help. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, looking back at the change, can you imagine it would take like a shorter time? Can you imagine that change that you actually showed us over here can take a shorter time? More than three months, more than Well, actually, I want to think about the changes in a very different way. It's not about having some deadline. Mm -hmm. It's same as uh, as you know all of the companies which we which which we are working for here. Uh, we have successful products, meaning like the products uh, will never end until they sunset. Meaning like you know if you have still some things to more more of the things to to improve to uh, implement, that's actually a healthy state. Meaning like uh, there is never an end uh, mm -hmm. towards that path, right? So once again, it's about Kaizen, it's about continuous improvement, it's about improving things as the company grows. Therefore, uh, what I mean to say, the path might be endless until, until we are really like the, the uh, you know, you are at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Like it definitely could be like piece of the pause with the first and second, right? <laughs> uh, and of course, maybe uh, it could be faster like the first roll rollout or the preparation before the first rollout. Um, but I'm not sure if like is something what we should be pushing for. Uh, it is not something what uh, would be deciding like uh, if the business will go or not. Uh, it's something what is like a uh, complementary business, mm -hmm. or something like in the background. Uh, so of course we could invest way more energy and time to this uh, and which in shorter time. But uh, I'm not sure if this is something that would make sense. Is there um... Is there a thing that helped in your company culture that, that was able to support you during the change? I would say brutally honest feedback. Mm -hmm. Like if you are trying to bring some change and someone say, well, that, it's a really good idea, but you don't want it. Um, <laughs> I say really really want it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Did honest feedback, but brutal honest feedback is okay, thank for the opinion. And you, can, and you can go mm -hmm. and you can go. It was something like this. So I would say if you build a really trustful environment when the guys in your team are not, uh, where they are not able to give you any feedback, it won't work. If you build a safe environment when, where everybody can just 
uh, tell the right feedback, like brutally honest feedback about what you are doing. This is something what will really helps you. But it's not only about the getting the feedback, it's about the accepting the feedback and ask them, okay, got it. Thanks for your opinion. What you will do, uh, what change we can do, what do you think? Like to hurt those people, what they introduce you about, what they will tell you about the change, what they will do differently or something like that. So not only let them, let them call it or not only uh, let them to tell the feedback, but also act on the feedback somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, in my opinion, uh, yeah, I might be, I might be saying like, you know, I think both are covered very well. I think mm -hmm. like we are, we are, we are good here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were asking if there was yeah. a culture change. No, if, if there was an um, a, th a thing in your culture yeah. in, the, in the company culture that helped with the change. That that was the yeah. what Wojta mentioned that it was a uh, it was the feedback that probably that's the culture in your in your company in Kebola where. Um, you you tell yourself like fuck off. Right? Yes. Yeah. yes, fuck off for that. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, what I what I mean to say is that, for example, one of the values in, at SBU is is uh, transparency, meaning like mm -hmm. you know that's the reason why I was saying we are on the very same page. So people who might be intriguing or you know talking bullshit, then then they don't work in in, uh, in our place. That's mm -hmm. that's about it. Therefore, you know uh, I'm challenging the guys to raise the hand all the time, and they mm -hmm. do that. Uh, fortunately, so that's that's the right thing. I think it is more well, like, like people, and especially in IT, are very much open minded. Uh, until they understand why you are doing it, uh, they can even like sacrifice that. Like, it, it's something what maybe uh, make them uh, like, be a little bit punished or something. Uh, and it's like I'm, not, I'm going to the extremes, but uh, until they understand that, okay, it uh, has some higher purpose. Uh, they see it and they understand it, then they are all open-minded and, and, and welcoming the change, uh, if it makes sense. They just like uh, are annoyed when it's something what they don't understand why they are doing it. And so, so this is the crucial, crucial to, to mm -hmm. make very clear like uh, what and why we are doing the change or mm -hmm. solve anything. During my change, uh, during the implementation of Jira, uh, I received feedback about, I think it was after one month of, or three months of implementation, and I received the feedback, it's, this change is too slow. Uh, because <laughs> they know what, why we need it. I really spent a lot of time on a shuffle diplomacy. And after that, I received, hey, Wita, it's too slow. It should be faster. Just implement it faster to all the teams. We also want it. Just spread it all across the whole team, all, all across the whole tech department. That's probably what you want, right? That's, that's definitely what you want. <laughs> no talks. <laughs> no talks. Um, most of the teams were influencers. They want it. That, that's the thing you want to do to introduce change that they want it. And they should push you that you should uh, introduce the change faster. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> it, was one, it was one lifetime experience. <laughs> It's not going to happen again. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, well. We, we we have to touch this, and I think that's the what can you refer as a as a failure? Do you re remember some fuck up that you did uh, with the with the change that you implement somewhere, or, or maybe not the not not the big change, but maybe one thing that is, as a reference is a, is a fuck up. I think I had one fuck up. Uh, in the presentation, <laughs> that I think the change will be a bit too easy to implement. <laughs> like, hey, there is it, I want to track you. <laughs> and it, it, it didn't happen. Uh, yeah. It stopped me for one month, I think, because I need to start making the shuffle diplomats and so on. Well, in my case, uh, that was a very funny story because, uh, uh, you know, one of my previous companies, I was told that, you know, uh, I wanted to provide the whiteboards to all my teams. And basically, uh, you know, I didn't go for compromise, meaning like uh, I really wanted to have these whiteboards. And uh, at the end of the day, it ended up the way that I covered the, 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 the wall space where the mission and the vision of the company was written. <laughs> and uh, the, the owner of the company was uh, a little bit upset about it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, that that change hasn't been executed very well, but uh, it served the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> You write it on, on the whiteboard. <laughs> well, that 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 was uh, that was also not. So yeah. Don't cover your vision. All right. I think we also have to see that nothing pops in my head. That uh, so what what where I'm not satisfied currently is uh, basically we are trying to do something similar with the with the network showing, uh, basically having the uh, way better data uh, showing the output. And we are fighting this. This is for me currently uh, backup, which is in in the progress somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, but currently, I'm very much not satisfied with where we are. Uh, can you elaborate a bit? What does it mean? Uh, uh, we've been like we, we are way more focused on the uh, outcomes and on metrics, basically from product perspective and from company perspective. We are using Docas and everything. Definitely, there is a lot of measurement about it. Uh, but uh, we never. Mm, until now, somehow like a push button, but we didn't have really the requirement to, to measure also like outcomes, which basically somehow increase probability of achieving uh, outputs. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's hard to so get it. Uh, so basically talking about this metadata from engineering, so better hygiene in JIRA and etc. Uh, as, as we were growing, so we had there like a huge freedom in uh, using whatever, however you want. Without proper guidelines, and uh, and now it's uh, kind of tough not to, to, to solve it and to change it. Basically, tidy up, uh, clean up mm -hmm. uh, all this hygiene, uh, so we can actually measure anything on uh, any other level than uh, than pin level. Mm -hmm. The different thing on metadata about the engineering is, or or different thing about the data as itself is that you have to control it somehow. Like you can make some you will put the Jira data, for example, to the Google, the pressure, <laughs> exactly. um, just an example, and you just calculate something and you make some conclusions. Jira is slightly messy software, but you got some output in the end and you make some uh, resolutions on this data. That, hey, okay, well, our sprint is not so satisfied. We have problems here, we have problems here. That's what I did. And I came up with the first dashboard for one week or something like that. And I didn't check the outputs. Like, okay, I had some decisions uh, in our in the in the looker, which is platform for the dashboards and so on. And I made some conclusions. And uh, so I came back to the team and I said, "Hey, we have problems here. We have problems here." And I said, it seems like wrong data. And they have through all my conclusions what I was doing during the one week. They were all wrong because I had bad pipeline. <laughs> so I had. To so push it back another month. <laughs> yes, it was postponed uh, for one month. So always check your data when uh, your source system is zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe I can show also one story. Like we, we have implemented one tool for basically like trying to uh, find uh, something meaningful in all this data from Jira uh, and GitLab, especially when you when you don't have it somehow like reasonably aligned for the company. Uh, and uh, we asked them for a benchmark, and uh, and they came up with with a like, resolution that uh, we don't have proper like development practices because uh, many we, we don't have uh, a lot of comments uh, on merge requests, so we don't do reviews, uh, and this is what pop up from the, the, the data. What is basically like not a lot of it in our case it is that uh, our CIC and CD is uh, like so advanced or basically kind of sophisticated. The many things the, compared to other companies are not simply in the comments because they are catched during the process when the company is building the test run, are running, etc. So this is uh, always tricky, tricky one with uh, like, uh, looking at these uh, conclusions, uh, which are very nice in graphs. But, uh, <laughs> double check your graphs. Double, double, double check, check your graphs. <laughs> really? What? It's not always about the hockey stick. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't do this? Um, we started this, uh, I, I started the introduction in the beginning, uh, it was about the scale. So you, you were in the order of the scale, uh, yet many of the tips were actually very similar. Where do you feel that the scale actually makes the difference? Like what is the, is it, is it the difference, is it differentiator, the scale? Would you do it differently for a bigger scale? 
I would say the biggest differentiator is uh, regarding to the shuffle diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Like closing in general, necessity to mm -hmm. invest in the phases, the preparation, communication. Mm -hmm. There are big differences. Like uh, when you have a team of 10 people, you just simple, simply with any change, put them into one room, room and we will not <laughs> go home until we agree. <laughs> so, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> But it's easier because you are usually in day-to-day -day contact and you have, have them like closer. So, or you can take them to the bar and, and, and have these talks around the beer. After a couple of sessions, you get to alignment. <laughs> you cannot get yes, drunk, drunk, drunk by 100 people. <laughs> uh, so, so, so communication methods, cause of, cause of change and, and uh, time and energy. Mm -hmm. Indeed. For me, biggest one, but yes, principles are more, more or less like book exactly. is more or less the same. You still, you still need to have a reason why are you implementing the change? That, that's the same. It, sorry, but they just bothered me one year and <laughs> it's, it's like this you, you just have to have the meaning of the change. But the shuffle of is different, as Stella said. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was about influencing 10 people, it was it took me two weeks or something like that. But mm -hmm. I cannot imagine how I will be at 400 people. Because if you want to influence at least half of them, it's 200 people. Uh, if they have some managers and they are divided into the team for uh, about 10 people, it's about influencing 20 managers. It's really it's a really huge task, I think. <laughs> and that's the reason why it should take a long time in bigger companies, I think. But there, there are tricks for how to how to do it. To learn. Tr trust me, the first one. Should <laughs> <laughs> work very very carefully. Uh, if you get the people who put them strong opinions to your side and, and let them to find a solution, uh, and of course then uh, then if you have manager or basically very good leaders, you are starting with them and then they are helping you to influence others. So, uh, but yes, it's take more time. Definitely more interaction and when it can count, it, it doesn't matter like how many I need to do I personally but uh, count all of them. Um they would definitely uh, more way more. All right. Uh we also have a question over here from the from the um Slido. It's for you, Voita. It's saying like did you did some scrum master help you implement scrum? Yes, good question. Uh from the beginning, we don't have a Scrum Master. And I think I can manage uh, everything by myself, which was fault. And after, I would say, one year of unsuccessfully, unsuccessfully implementing of Scrum, uh, we hire as uh, <laughs> agile, agile teacher, coach, I would say, uh, Teresa, and she really helps us with implementing all these features because I don't have an opponent who knows the Scrum very well, and everything I was doing was only regarding my opinion and regarding to my experience, which were really poor. Uh, and uh, she helped me really a lot. So uh, it was the last thing I recommended uh, in the step-by-step -step tutorial, acquire someone who understands it. And I think it was the same with Standard. Just hire someone who really knows the problem well. But here I would say that be very careful how you are doing it because sometimes or some companies tend to do it in a way that they cannot outsource problem they don't want to solve to <laughs> consultants. And consultants are great until there is still somebody in the company who is solving together like with them. Like, so they can bring expertise. But uh but one is just like proposing the solution for you, uh this is like uh, be careful to, to not do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it reminds me, uh, we have, I think, like a six candidates for the Scrum Master or Agile Coaching or something like that. We had three companies, and before I announced them uh, our problems, uh, they give me the proposal of the price. Uh, so I think, okay, this will not be the right way, I think. So I spent more time with three of them, and after that, uh, Stemme said, be very careful with choosing the right one who will help you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we probably check. Is that is there any question in the audience? Right. 
just feel free to ask, raise your hand. I will not. You put it there. That this one, the second one. The second one so we'll jump on that. You can wait. That's fine. Do you have any cross-functional teams or teams of special uh, team behind us? Uh, specialists. Um, it's the question to all. Yeah, let me start with this one. Um, uh, it means we do have the cross-functional teams. And, uh, you know, it, it's really, you know, um, I guess the person who, who's asking this question is, uh, it always depends on uh, what's the product uh, of the company. So usually, for example, I used to be working for a biometric company, which has worked at Kihede. And uh, in that case, uh, having the physical structure of going through the, uh, the functions, meaning the front and back and et cetera, that makes complete sense because these guys are the, you know, the primary source of your, of your uh, outputs and outcomes. However, if you create some sort of a meaningful product uh, that are not that much deeply technical, you create some sort of SDK, so, you know, technical uh, solutions, then in that case, uh, let's, let's go for the cross-functionality because uh, these teams are driven by, by, by the sub-products and that by, you know, the outcome of that product itself. Right, that's that's the general recommendation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So in overall, it is very rare that I would recommend uh, to have uh, technically technically already structured. Uh, and if that's that the case, that's only for highly technical companies. Mm -hmm. We have combination of everything. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we kind of first of all, we are trying to do some kind of dual leadership when it comes like you want to like a front back and health, but also PMs, testing, UX, etc. Uh, so, so we are having the kind of mirror structures in, uh, in, uh, when it comes to, to engineering uh, PM and UX. It's not yet 100% one one-to-one, -one, and never be 100%, but it's, uh, uh, it's uh, not where we would like to have it. So it's somehow also the topic. Um, and yes, we have, we have uh, also platform teams which are way more technical. And I mean, for example, it's an infrastructure of people in platform as a service. We have some components teams uh, which have some particular, like uh, more like KPRs, SLS driven, and having something like uh, what they are watching. Uh, for example, our, our automation teams, uh, where it's kind of clear uh, that there is a lot of external uh, dependencies. Uh, uh, and, uh, and and they work a little bit different, and then uh, we try to have uh, as much as possible cross functional team. We have some, and I guess this is the, this is, I agree with my this is the, the way we should go. Um, have more uh, where it's possible, uh, more product really end to end cross functional teams. Currently, we have uh, some of them like stable one, uh, some of them virtual, virtual. But I like like that. I get this like this question like oh uh, what is team very very good question I, I think we were uh, one, once we are talking about yeah. that. at the end of the day the team is like a group of people who are solving some problem and uh, it's not always a, or or vice versa it's almost always not a group of people who are reporting to some other mm -hmm. I remember we have RFC of 22 pages about this. <laughs> <laughs> As Marianne said, uh, it depends what product do you have. Is it technical or is it just a product where you need to make forms and so on? Uh, we have been fighting with this. We have a lot of discussions with our product because <clears throat> it depends uh, if you are trying to build a product centric team or code centric team. For us, we are a technical company and we are more striving to code centric company, which is much more easy for the developers and much more hard for the product because they need to, if they want to implement something, they have to go across multiple teams. Like, what is the team? Yes, it's someone who has the, pro has the common problem. But at this moment, we are at the more at the code centric. We are working more as a code center company, which means we have a teams around exact repositories. We try to switch it. I have been discussing this with Maria a lot of times. Uh, we try to switch it, but it doesn't work yet. And we think when you have a code center team and you don't have a blockers between teams that they are able to cooperate with one each other, 
it can work, but you need to have uh, technicals, more technical product uh, as we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sounds like another change. It sounds like <laughs> another change. Uh, uh, that's that's uh, that's what we are saying here. That if you want to change something, you, you need to be really sure that you need a reason why are you changing mm -hmm. that. At, at this moment, I'm not really sure that it will the change will make it better mm -hmm. because I don't see the outcomes yet. What what, what outcomes can be? Product team saw it already many times. They talked to me many times, but I'm not really sure that we should uh, change uh, to current functional teams and we should keep the cost of the teams. Mm -hmm. In this case, if I may add, we also, uh, as Stanley said, we also have the platform teams as well, for sure. But the thing is like, you know, if you want to make the product uh, uh, cross-functional teams uh, working well, you need to have the, the secondary hierarchy, which are, which are about the function, right? The community of practice for mm -hmm. front-end, back-end data science, whatever that is, mobile, QA, and these things, they have to work very well to in order to support you because without them, uh you know people won't be uh having you know support from the technical side of things right mm -hmm. so without it we would be doomed without these guys mm -hmm. yeah. exactly but this is what i wanted to add to make a comment i think so we will pick it up uh basically uh especially when it comes to how organized teams uh you need to realize that uh once you shift into product teams you will not uh you will sol solve some your, of your problems but create new ones mm -hmm. And you need to always balance what is bigger problem at the moment or what you value more. So, so it's really alchemy and it can change during the lifetime of the company. You can go back and forth, uh, unfortunately, like every two, three years to go to change it. Like we had, we had it also in our, in our case, like sometimes we centralize something just to like a, you know, increase the domain knowledge of, 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 the, of it and then decentralize again to the team or vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's, it's kind of okay. And maybe one, one thing what uh, sometimes I think that, especially, uh, oh, I will not exalt anybody, uh, when, when product is uh, proposing these product teams uh, and, and we should shuffle it, uh, sometimes what we a little bit ignore is uh, architecture. Uh, this is uh, like a priority, business priorities can change very quickly. But basically you have some external thing, you have some great idea and, and, and you, you can change it. Uh, but with, uh, Architecture, especially when you have, for example, like we have like, about 500 uh, microservices, uh, it's not that easy to react. Uh, so even you are doing it like somehow like uh, uh, conceptually, uh, and uh, and it's take time, or uh, you need to find tricks and how to how to mitigate it. Because simply like to say that okay, this is the team now. Uh, and, and put it in under one manager doesn't mitigate the fact that basically there is some API call which is communicating with some other service and it means that these two teams which are all these services will need to talk. Mm -hmm. so most, most of all. So hopefully not. It's about no, no the trade-offs. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if you change something, it will take around six months or something like that until the things start working. Because someone told me the structure follows culture, or if you put, you know, yes. the opposite way, or something like that. And everybody needs to have some time just to adapt the change. So it is not, hey, we are going to implement this team, or we are going to create this team because we need to fulfill the three months gap, mm -hmm. or something like that. It will not work. With that regards, there are um, several stories being told from like that managers or VPs from different company. I know that we have one from Flixbus that said that when they did a change of changing towards the product teams, they make the table flip pretty much. That mm -hmm. One day they, they put all the engineering into one room and um, they ask where they want to work and they just make the team suddenly. Uh, my question is, uh, how favor are you to this kind of um, table flip and doing one change in one, like one day? That's what I did. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. Uh, it was advice from guys from Heureka uh, because they did it also. They had some teams. Um, because we have a structure where there were no teams. Everybody was working on what he or she want. And it was not organized. And I said, hey, okay, you are making an, on a lot of topics. 
we should be a, a, a little bit more focused, at least a little bit, because there was a guy who was capable to develop UIs. Uh, he was used to work on the Docker builds. He need, he knows how to work CI. It is, this structure is built on heroes, and you need to divide those heroes into the teams to um, to support learning the knowledge and so on. So what we did is that we wrote the stickers on the wall with all the topics what we are uh, what we what we are having like I would say microservices, what all the microservices what we are having the, and we had around forty of them, and then we group them. Uh, into the circles and then people go to the wall went to the wall and they had a sticker with their name and they put their name i want to work on this 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 and this and after that we realized that the sum topics are really similar so we group the microservices together and after that there were some people who want to work on ui uh, they want to they want to be an infrastructure team and they also want to do backend and I let them decide what they want to do. So for example, uh, one guy, he, he knows everything and he decided that he wanted to be focused on the UI team. And it was really good for him because he, really good, he made a really good performance inside his team and he became the leader of this team. And I think it works very well in the end. So, so let's do that. If you think that the teams you are having now, it simply doesn't work, let's do that and shuffle them. But, but you have no teams. We have no teams. So it's, I think, a little bit different and uh, way easier to, to do it than having like, teams with relationships with everything and then start doing different. Uh, honestly, I probably have in mind like different way how to get there. <laughs> I can't imagine like, putting 500 people in uh, locations in front of those sticky notes. And, <laughs> on, a, on a big party. <laughs> yes, it's different scale. And we have no teams, so, so the, choice, <laughs> the choice was quite easy. We so you need to build a team. So. Well, to me, it always depends on the you know on the context, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, it's the never-ending question of you know how to apply the change, whether that's the revolution or evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if that concerns the the structure, of course, it has to be the the revolution because you don't want to live in some you know uh, double reflected world or whatever, right? But in case we do some uh, other changes, uh, it might be evolution. For example, what I'm planning to do exactly is once again, and coming back to to Voita, to uh, for example, uh, roll out the the other way how we work in terms of you know moving from Scrum to Kanban. And here I want to uh, pilot it on a, on a couple of teams uh, to to get the buy-in and then, then to make it work the the next year. So that's that's the other approach, right? So it it always depends, right? Mm -hmm. There and then there is yet another dimension, which is like uh it's it's uh, it's nice to change the structure or the processes but the most uh difficult thing in my opinion is to ch is to change the mindset of people and the culture right and that's a completely different thing and that this thing like that there is no revolution mm -hmm. approach to, to that right mm -hmm. other than you know you might be uh moving yourself to another company <laughs> <laughs> of course like send a signal and screen yeah. okay, but then, then it makes sense in our case i think we don't need to do Definitely a huge uh, revolution. Uh, I think we somehow already know like the, the teams maybe need a, to hire a different kind of talent or basically maybe match it. It won't be like a huge one, but yes, like once we identify them and, 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 and somehow, then, then it's need to be done like kind of quickly because mm -hmm. like the passing is okay, like from some time we will start doing it, it doesn't mm -hmm. really work. Okay. Uh, let's take the last two questions. Uh, the, this one from Lukash, I think we already answered, but this one from Peppa. Do you have an example of, of when the changes started to realize had to, uh, had to be stopped and things restored to the previous state? How did you manage that? Well, I, I don't have, or I don't want to have a specific example here. <laughs> <laughs> that's better to say and of course like i did uh, to say quite a lot of uh, mistakes uh, to be honest uh but uh, you know if you learn from them then then that's 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 basically the thing right uh which you wanna which you wanna end up with 
but uh, you know, to me, all the time there was uh, some sort of a fuck up or things that haven't shown up that that works in a, in, a, in the way as predicted. Uh, again, it's about uh, you know I, I, I'm, I'm very deeply in love with with uh, the transparency principle. So it's about me raising the hand, saying like you know things are not going the, the way as we predicted, and basically to say okay let's let's uh, all it out if, if that's possible, right? Of course, but uh, once again, if you make as we as we've been saying things in an iterative manner, then uh, uh, you know these sort of changes, small changes are are reversible, right? So that's that's the approach I, I recommend in general, right? So if you go for too big and you can't handle it, or the timing is incorrect, so it's usually once again it's all about it's almost about the timing all the time. Then of course, like things might not be going well here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, then I can agree with, with Marian. I, I have maybe an example of change, but it wasn't that we uh, we realized during the change that uh, easy to be stopped. It was kind of planning. We mm -hmm. simply need to get some data very quickly. Uh, when Corona hit us, we needed to get some data and visibility. So we, the, the faster way to do it, it was kind of like, a, okay, so, so check it somewhere uh, in Jura. Uh, and it was temporary state until we were, we were able to move to something more sophisticated, which can get it via like a logging server or something. So it was uh, something was very suboptimal, but uh, we did it quickly uh, to, to ensure that we could prevent like this to fail. Uh, and and uh, as soon as we implemented something or replace it, then we of course like uh, put it put it away. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say it's quite okay to stop the change. Uh, it really depends on the environment you, you have. Uh, it's really necessary, I would say, to not go the environment. I told you that that is not the good way. Uh, for example, if because you you definitely done or you will definitely do some bad change and you need to hear the voices as, as marianne said you need to hear the voices of the people who are in this change and you need to stop it uh, it's same as the development curve when you want to do change uh, when the 80 percent of done it's very expensive uh, to make the to stop the change when 80 percent is done if we will have to stop now the jira it, it will be a really expensive change so at the beginning, you really need to listen to the people who are in this change. And you can change it, uh, or you can change the 50% of the change, like you go to another direction or something like this. So just to listen to the people and build an environment where there is, I told you, it's not used word or not used sentence. And you as a leader start with, because when someone make a failure, because it's a making a failure, uh, you should not be the one who's there and hey, I told you, you should not go this way. It's about the building the environment when you can change your decisions without any harm. Mm -hmm. Actually, that reminds me uh, one of the things, which is like, uh, you know, even myself, when I grew from a developer to a, some sort of a leader to, you know, whatever stages, uh, uh, being a leader and uh, making some changes, it's, it's very hard because uh, we used to get the satisfaction very quickly throughout the coding and implementing the features. And uh, now as a leader, uh, you can't predict the future. You, you just talk about the probability that hopefully things are gonna go in the right direction when you make that change. So what, what I mean to say, uh, I think like we speak quite a lot about the Pareto rule, the, the 80-20 rule. And here like the, the lesson learned which I need to go through is that uh, once again, not, not, not for perfection, what I mean to say is that if you are able as a manager or as a leader to implement 80% of things in the right way, then you are a hell of a good manager. Uh, because if you go for 100%, that's nice, but that, that I, then I might challenge you that actually you are not doing the right changes or these changes are too weak mm -hmm. or too, too you know, uh, not, not that much of an ambition, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the, I would say the average manager is able to accomplish 50% 50 of, 50 of things, right? The SAPA manager even less, but if you do 80%, that's already hell of a good thing. So that's just to remind people that you know we don't have a crystal ball, so there might be the case that some of the things are not going right, but it's that's part of the game, basically. Right. So just letting the people fail, yeah. raising them an environment where they can fail. Yeah. 
because you as will fail. <laughs> as small as possible. As quick as possible. As quick as possible. <laughs> as quick as possible. <laughs> Just fail. Like if you fail, fail. Fail, 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 gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think we touched the, the one from the animals already, but let's let's look at the last one. Um, Stanley, can you share what? Uh, still moving. Right? More <laughs> of the change. Yeah, of APS the change. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, like we can actually answer the date, like uh, questions like uh, who are our uh, our performance, <laughs> who is performing out. So we uh, every team now we have phrase data and we are like basically. Uh, seeing it, but also also we are measuring uh, some kind of like a satisfaction and feedback we get. Uh, I know we were sending uh, uh, also from the people uh, what uh, what uh, showing us kind of good results. I don't remember the numbers. Uh, I can accidentally share it. Maybe you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but it, it is kind of successful because it didn't stop it. If it would be, then we would change something. And every iteration is improving something based on actually like not satisfied people uh, until it's significant uh, thing to improve. Uh, we are also measuring uh, kind of fairness in a way that uh, uh, if people agree that people who should be promoted have been promoted, uh, and there we had uh, basically uh, 80 90 percent plus, like uh, almost everybody answered that uh, yes, like it is fair, like people who should be promoted have been promoted, people who shouldn't be promoted. Even when they were uh, suggested for promotion, have not been promoted, etc. So we have, we have a couple of metrics. I'm not sure if I have some like an ultimate one. Mm -hmm. Do you have something in mind? Like, do you have something like this? No, 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 no probably it's a, it's, a, it's a set of it's a set, it's of, set of, of like set of uh, number of people complaining. Mm -hmm. yeah. they are complaining, complaining. Yeah, in feedback, and then in feedback is translated into next iteration and so on. So. I mean, it's it can be considered a KPI. Yeah. Uh, after some, after we, some level, we, yes. we, we have qualitative <laughs> and quantitative. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. What I mean to say that you know there is no uh, one single KPI. It's a, it's a multitude of, of combination of factors or indicators that come together. It's not about like we might be saying, okay, what's the number of pull requests you you know we merged or these sort of things. That, that's already one thing. Especially when it comes to the people, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's that KPI might sound that <laughs> tricky word. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of the other thing actually, which is like if you if you you know uh, base your uh, the performance on on some data and statistics, that's fine, but it shouldn't be a rule because then uh, uh, the uh, let's say the experience which I have is that people will start faking the data. Yeah. That's I, that's for sure. Yeah. Like. Uh, and clever people will do, will do that. You, I, I can bet my, my soul on that. That was my actually first thought process when I saw your, your dashboard and you even say the word gamification. Yeah. I was like, how did you prevent? Uh... But of course, like there, there were people uh, <laughs> trying to fake it and, uh, and uh, it, that, that was not a surprise. But here it's not about like the numbers, it's about you know the way how you change the mindset of people mm -hmm. thinking about things, right? So of course there, there, there are certain people who are trying to hack it. And then that's that's part of the system. But in overall, it's not about a single individual. It's about changing the way how we work and the culture mm -hmm. uh, overall. And that's the impact which we want to see. Mm -hmm. Basically, we do the work well to help these people in, in, in the community yeah. who are trying to fake, uh, fake it. And, uh, and usually, like when you are doing anything like this, you are you, you, you can never measure one metric. That, that's yeah. definitely, <laughs> definitely will be fake. Uh, but uh, once you measure it, many things, and, uh, and uh, what I think Marian is doing that he's changing the focus, or uh, maybe a, a, every month or every quarter. But okay, now we are focusing on this. Uh, until the faking is that difficult <laughs> yeah. to fake it, that it's easier to do the job properly than than people start. Yeah, they are, they are yeah, shifting the focus to other things. Right? I, I, yeah. I think that, yeah, that's true. So definitely not yeah. measure like one metric. <laughs> ultimate one <laughs> or make it so difficult to, <laughs> <laughs> to make it be easy to do the job yeah. all right thank you very much Kate. would you have any last word or any any any, any something that before any other change uh, i think we are good we are we are the authority for having a yeah cool. but one thing uh, to remember that's the shuttle diplomacy right so, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean there is definitely a set of set of um like you said a cookbook there is a cookbook 
from all three slides uh, that suggest how you should do a change. Um, not forget about the steps. Uh, I think we learned those and you can find it also in the slides and the recording to get back to it. Um, and I would like to thank you actually for showing this experience too about how did you change what it cost you in terms of even probably your, your time and, and, and uh, energy. Um, and I don't know, I think uh, we learned and we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.